So what are split nights? Well, these often affect older babies or toddlers and typically what happens is they go to sleep at the beginning of the night and then wake up at some point in the night, often to play or just to make trouble. And this period can last from half an hour up to like two or three hours. Now, if it's a once off and it doesn't really happen in a sequence, I really wouldn't worry about it. This can occur with the development of any new skill like walking or crawling or learning to stand. Something really exciting that they wake up in the night remembering and just want to practice. So if that's just a one off event, don't worry about it too much. However, if it's been going on for days or weeks and often at a predictable time, your little one wakes up in the night and has no intention of going back to sleep, then I might have some tips for you. Now, when people complain about their children being awake in the middle of the night, often I hear that very well-meaning advice they've been given is to sleep train their child. Now, that's often a pointless exercise because in many cases, the children actually fall asleep with no problem whatsoever. Some are completely self-settling um, and generally they're really good sleepers. But the fact remains that they just wake up in the night with energy to burn. Now, generally, beyond the advent of new skills that might um, cause the occasional split night, there's usually two common culprits for the cause of split nights. One is too much day sleep or a bedtime that's too early. But either way, essentially what it's doing is expecting more sleep overnight than the child is capable of. You see, we've all got an amount of sleep in 24 hours that we're physically capable of doing. And if any of us nap in the day, nap too much in the day, go to bed too early, this could happen to people of any age that they wake up in the night thinking, oh, what do I do now? I'm awake. So if this is happening with your baby, I'd say, first of all, have a look at the daytime naps. Is it possible that they're having quite long, relaxing daytime naps, and then that's impacting the amount of sleep they can achieve overnight? Or perhaps you're putting them to bed nice and early so they go down happily at seven and they usually wake up at seven o'clock in the morning but they're awake for a two hour portion in the night. Now if that's the case you might want to ask yourself well actually is 10 hours of sleep overnight all they're ever going to get and particularly if they're having like a couple of hours of sleep in the day as well it may well be all they can get and because they're going to bed so early and they've only got 10 hours of sleep in their tank well, they're either going to wake up at, say, 5 a.m. or they're going to have a couple of hours in the night where they want to play and make up for time in the day that maybe they were sleeping. So lots of people work on the assumption that 7 o'clock, 7.30 is the ideal time for children to go to bed. But the thing is, they're all different. Some go to bed happily at that time and sleep all night through. Others have lower sleep needs and there's just no way they're going to sleep 12 hours through the night and whatever day sleep they still require too. So it's probably best if I just give you an example. So let's say a two-year-old. Uh, the average sleep needs of a two-year-old, according to studies, are anywhere between 10 and 13 hours in 24. They're all going to vary. But for argument's sake, let's say this two-year-old functions really nicely on 12 hours of sleep across 24. So now he's taking a nap in the middle of the day for about two hours, and that nap often finishes somewhere around two, three o'clock. For most two-year-olds, I'd expect something like a six or a seven hour block of time awake in the afternoon before they're properly ready for sleep. But some children are so willing and so good at going to bed that they would just happily go down at seven o'clock if that's the time that they were put down. But if they've only just woken up at two, if we're putting them down at seven, that's only five hours since they woke up. So really, if they've got two hours still left in them to play, they're going to have it later on in the night. We cannot ask a two-year-old with a sleep need of 12 hours to sleep 12 hours at night and two hours in the day because that's 14 hours in 24. They, it may just not physically be possible. So in this scenario, I'd say, look, probably a later bedtime, if your child will manage it, would be perfect. Aim for a 10-hour night instead of a 12-hour night, and you'll probably see that split night disappear. Now, the other option as well is to limit day sleep, but that really depends on the stage of development they're at, the size they are. Do they have the capacity to get through the day on just one hour of sleep or do they really need a two hour nap? So whatever you decide is best for your child if you're dealing with split nights, just make sure you're looking at their overall sleep need in 24 hours. You know, look at average what they've 
thrived on in the past, what amount of sleep you think they really need, the chances are that's probably about right. And just look at how you're distributing it across the 24 hours. In most cases, I find that children are actually getting a perfect amount of sleep in 24 hours. They are not overtired as many people suspect. So just do the numbers and see what you think.